Good morning. Today is Wednesday, the 25th day of Sivan. And we are in the last part of chapter 7 in the Shah Yichud Ve'amuna and the Tanya, the gateway of unity and faith in Hashem. What we, were le- what we learned yesterday, we spoke about yesterday and the day before, about the tzimtzum, the contraction. And as we said, this is a very fundamental idea that the Alter Rebbe clarifies what the Arizal, the Holy Arizal wrote about the bringing the world into being, it came about through contraction. And the contraction that he called, he called it the removal of his light in order to make room for this world to exist, for this world to come to be. And the, and the words Arizal used is that he removed his light, and then there was a void, and there was a line of light that came to a reduced light to be able to bring the world into being. And as we explained in the, uh, yesterday and the day before, that the Alter Rebbe clarified that the interpretation of this is not what some Torah scholar mistake, mistakenly explained that this means literal, but, and, it, and we explained yesterday also how this is not literal, why it cannot be literal. Hashem does not literally re- remove his light, is only in our perspective perspective of the created beings, that Hashem's uh, endless light is not here, is not sensed. So this would be explained, if uh, you can refer to the previous lessons, if you want to understand it per- uh, further, and this is on YouTube. Once again, a reminder to also to, if you can, share, and that uh, other Yidin will be able to join and benefit from this Tanya classes. Now, and today the Alta Rebbe continues to say that if we're, now that we're talking about the symptom that Hashem contracted the light, there is also the concept of Hashem encompassing the light, encompassing the world, and filling the world. What that means there is the light of Hashem that comes, but it encompasses. What does it mean encompasses? Seems like Hashem is removed, which seems to be like the other people that mistakenly said that Simpson Kipshuto, and it means Hashem removed his light. And al explains now, again, that the Hashem encompasses the encompassing light of Hashem, which is endless and limitless, and therefore the world cannot perceive this light. And then there is also the light that, Hashem, that is Memale, which is, fills the, the world, that Hashem reduced this light to the, way in, to the point that the world is able to contain this light. And it's going to explain also how this is done through the letters that Hashem, the, created the world with the ten utterances and the different substitution of letters which came about as we explained earlier which brought about a different creating being created beings to be so let's look inside the tanya we'll share So here, says the Alter Rebbe, Ki mokoi rachayus ruach piv shel ha-kodesh baruch hu. Amislabesh ba-asova ma-amore shebetoira. For the source of life force is the breath of the mouth of the Holy One, blessed be He, 
it becomes enclosed in the ten utterances of the Torah from which all created beings come into existence. As we said in the in previous chap chapters, that the ten utterances really literally contain every single cre cre uh, possible created beings. How? Through different combinations of the letters that that there is Kabbalistically explained how this can be used. The breath of his mouth could have diffused without end and limit and created worlds infinite in the quality and quantity and give them and given them life force unlike their present state in which they are limited in all these respects meaning that from the word the the, the from the light of Hashem the breath of Hashem so to speak there, there is endless abilities just like the breath of a human being has endless abilities to order different types of words. So the breath, so to speak, of Hashem has endless abilities to create without any limits. And in that case, and this corporal world, all of whose being are limited and finite, would not have been created at all. For just as the Holy One, blessed be He, is called infinite, so are all His attributes and actions infinite. For He and His attributes are one. What we're saying is that the attributes of Hashem, the midis of Hashem, for example, chesed, kindness, is an attribute of Hashem. Kindness itself is infinite. From the measure of kindness, it can bring light. The measure of kindness can bring water. All kind of things can come from the same source. Just like when a person is kind, to just, just to use an, an, an example, when a person is kind, the kindness can be can be explained and interpreted in many different ways. Can be by giving money, by giving time, by other ways that a kindness can be expressed. The Hainu Achayu Sanim Shach Mimi Doisov, Shein Chesed Verachmin Vishami Doisov Akadoishes, Ali de Slapshus on Shemis Lapshus Beruach Piv. Meaning, the life force that animates from his attributes namely kindness and mercy and his other holy attributes emanates from them through their being enclosed in the breath of his mouth which refers to the sephira of malchut as we explained earlier the last of the attributes of the higher world is called malchus royalty and the royalty just like in a king, the, uh, the, uh, the kingdom is about giving and showing reign on the subjects. So Malchus represents the revelation, the breath of his mouth of Hashem, so to speak. And here it says the al Rebbe that there is two verses that talks about the world coming to be, which seems to be contradictory. Why? Because it says, Ki hu for creation results from God's speech and the breath of his mouth. As scripture state, states, for he spoke and it came into being. That's one place, one thing. That a world came to be from the words of Hashem. Then there is another place that it says, Ve'oilom al yedei chesed Moreover, Creation 
came about through chesed, kindness, as it is written. The world is built through chesed. But how is it? that the world is created both through chesed and malchus, malchus being kingdom which represents also the speech. Is it through chesed or is it through speech? Which one is it? The word of God. This means the attribute of chesed vested within malchus. That's what he explains. That the attribute of chesed is vested into the vessel which is the speech, and that's how it comes to, the, to be the limited world. So that the creation takes place through the word of God and the breath of his mouth, which becomes a vessel and garment for this creative attribute of chesed. And it says, Kehodein Kamtza, the Levushein Minei Ubei. It is like a snail whose garment is an integral component of his body. So the garment, the, the snail, some, some interpret it as a, as a turtle, but it's the same idea that when you have this animal has a garment, and the garment is the shell. But the shell is not a separate part of the animal. It's part of the animal itself. The same thing is when Hashem uses his garment, so to speak. The words that Hashem uses to, br and, uh, to, uh, to bring out the light, this is the vessels, the attributes, and the, and the words that limit and, and bring definitions to the light of Hashem, it is not separate from Hashem, but it is one thing with Hashem. Hello, Shetzim Tzim HaKadosh Baruch Hu Ho'oyo Ve'achayus Sheyucha Le'ispashet Meruach Pim. So the, the um, light itself that comes from Hashem is infinite. And the world would not have been created as it is a world that is limited. However, the Holy One, blessed be He, however, contracted the light and life force that could diffuse from the breath of his mouth. And invested it in the combination of the letters of the 10 utterances and the combination of their combination. How so? So he says, by substitution, substitution and transpositions of the letters themselves and the numerical values and equivalents. So basically, the, the substitution of the letters, as we learned in the previous chapters, is, for example, the letter Aleph can be substituted with the letter Taf. The first one and the last one. The letter base can be substituted with the letter shin. The second letter and the second of the last letter, and so on. There is other ways of substitutions. For example, there is letters that have the same root. And like, for example, there is the guttural letters that like the the hey and the ches and the i and that comes from the same root from the throat. So all of these letters can be substituted with each other. That's how we explained in the previous chapter about the word echad is substituted to va'ed. Aleph is substituted to the ches, the ayin, uh, the ches, I'm sorry, the aleph is substituted to the vav, the ches is substituted to the ayin, and the dalad, the big dalad to the small dalad, and so on. And it explains shekol chiluf utmura moire al yerida sa oyo ve achayus mi madrega la madrega. For each substitution and transposition indicates the descent of the light and life force degree by degree. So the word echad is one, 
But when it's substituted to va'ed, it's a lower level, a more reduced and diminished level of one in the letter of, in the word va'ed, which is the last word of Baruch Shem Kevod Machus Olam Va'ed. The Hainu, which means Sheyu Khaliv Rayula Hachayus Bruim, Shemadregas Echusam or Ma'alosam, Ipchusam in Madregas Echusam, Mailas, Abruim, and Ibroim. He says, so those substitutions is so that it will be able to create and give life to creatures whose quality and significance is lower than the quality and significance of the creatures created from the very letters and words of the Ten Utterances. Within which, meaning the ten utterances, is enclosed the Holy One, blessed be He, in His glory and essence, which are His attributes since they are one with God Himself. Now, the Acheshboim. Now he says, like we said before, there's different ways of substitution, but the smallest way is a numerical equivalent, that when two words have an equal numerical value, that shows of a very low diminishing of the light. It is much lower than you substitute one letter to another. He says the numerical value, even when it is, it is not calculated through the substitution and transposition of the letters, indicate the, the progressive diminu diminution of the life and life force. Until there remains from it only the final level, which is that of the sum and number of kinds of powers and garbs, I'm sorry, and grades contained in the light and life force invested in a particular letter combination of a particular word. So that means that the numerical value is a lower diminution of the light of Hashem. It is only after all these con contractions and other like them as God's wisdom has ordained, that the life force could invest itself even in the lower created beings, such as inanimate stones and dust, in which no life force at all is revealed, inasmuch as they represent the lowest level of the never created beings. And he brings an example of what happens with the life force in the stone. Where does it get the life force? So he says, Ki even, derech marshal, the word even means stone, shmoire ki sharosho mishem oile ban be mispare. He says, for example, the name even, the stone, indicates that its source is in the divine name ban. What is ban? Which is numerical uh, um, equals numerically it equals fifty-two, meaning the numerical value of the divine name Havaya, when spelled out phonetically in a particular way, the name Havaya Yud K Vav K, with with the fillings of each letter comes up when you spell it in a, a certain way comes up to the number fifty-two. So Evan is actually 53. You have Beis Nun is, is like Ban, 52, and then you have the Aleph. So he says, the name Avaya is really the source 
of the life of the stone by using those numerical values. You have 52 plus one, and the plus one, the Aleph, is a mystical thing. Void Aleph Neisefes Mishem Acher, Letam Ayadua Leyitzro, with an Aleph added from another name for a reason known to its creator. So he says, Shame Bam Now, when you take this name Ban, is from a very high place. Now, the name Ban itself relates to the very high world and its pristine state. In its pristine state, it can in no way serve as a source of a physical stone. However, Yet, through numerous and powerful contractions, degree by degree, meaning from higher to lower levels, that descended from it a life force so exceedingly diminished that it could clothe itself in a stone. And this very greatly con condensed life force is the soul of the inanimate being which gives it life and brings it into existence ex nihilo at every instant as been explained previously. This is what we say, the level of filling the world. Hashem fills the world. This greatly condensed life force is the level of He fills the world, all worlds. As opposed to the level of He encompasses all, world, all worlds. Wherein the life force is not contracted in proportion to the spiritual capacity of the created each power and grade of the life force would be able to create beings according to its own level, even unlimited and in, in quantity and quality, giving them everlasting life. Since it is the power of God that diffuses and animates from the breath of his mouth, and there is no restraint in his ability to create unlimited worlds. Their quality, however, would not be on a level as high as the quality and level of the create of the creatures which could be created from the power and degree of the of the letters themselves so this is the end of today's uh, shear and the end of today's chapter so in so in, to summarize what this what al Rebbe brings here is the ability what Hashem brings the world into being through both the Memale Kolamin, the encompassing light, and the uh, and the Memale is the filling light, and the Seyu Kolamin, which is the encompassing light. And this uh, connects also to what the Shia we gave last night about the meaning of the intent and action that when it comes to Torah Mitzvahs, why do we need to go so much into the details? And uh, the Torah, Hashem really controls every part of our life. And so why, why is, that, is that necessary? That is because really every part of our life is Hashem. And in, by, in, by Hashem, nothing was contracted. The symptom that contracted was only in our perspective. And the Torah and mitzvahs was given to us as a gift. And the more details we, the more, in a detailed way that we perform the Torah and the mitzvahs, the more our connection becomes internalized within us. So uh, this is the end of uh, today's shiur.
please share, please subscribe. And Amir Tzashem, uh, tomorrow we'll continue. If anybody has any questions, now is the time.